Go on, go for a second best, baby. Go for the best and find the rock doctor for you with ZocDoc. You've got more options than you know. ZocDoc is free and the websites where you can search and compare highly rated in network, baby. Those are th those are the words that taste delicious. In network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. What I love about ZocDoc, y'all, is that they have like real patient reviews. So they be in these <laughs> review streets roasting these doctors. And I like that ZocDoc lets me read real reviews from real people. Go to ZocDoc.com slash rivalry and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash rivalry. ZocDoc.com slash rivalry. Guys, listen, Sibling Rivalry, we, our debut performance at the Castro Theater for Sibling Rivalry Live is happening January 5th. January 5th, you, we're going to be at the Castro Theater. We've performed, I mean, it, for Sibling Rivalry, yeah, we, we've performed together at the Castro I said Rivalry. the debut of Sibling Rivalry Live is what I said. That, that was like my debut of 57th Street on the north side, on the east block. <laughs> anyway, go to the above and go to the, oh my God. Go get your tickets to go see us at the Castro Theater. You can go to, to seethedragqueen.com and you can find your ticket links there. Go to seethedragqueen.com. But you really should go to monetexchange.com and get the tickets through there. Y'all, Netflix is a joke and me and Monet happen to be absolutely hilarious. Sibling rivals going around the world. And by around the world, I mean literally San Francisco and LA. So kind of just <laughs> California. <laughs> so if you want to come see us for the Netflix is a Joke Festival, it's going to be on May 5th, which is my mom's, well, almost my mom's birthday. Come see us and go to monetexchange.com to get tickets. Well, what's your mom's birthday? May 9th. <laughs> okay. Get, go to seethedragqueen.com and get your tickets. <laughs> that's, not, that's not your mom's birthday. It's 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 almost. It's One, two, three. I'll count. You counted last time. One, two. Oh, so now you're not going to clap. <laughs> also, I heard a note from our... We can't not do a, we can't not do a clap slate, Mona. You count, no, 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 no. I heard from our editor. We don't need to do it at the same time. So I can do my own clap slate. One, two, three. Bitch, that's me. Do you do your own? That's... You don't have to do it. What? We don't have to do it together. Do you read the emails, Tamar? That doesn't sound accurate, but whatever. Do you read the emails, um, Tamar? I don't. I have someone do it for me. <laughs> I can't read. You are so proud. Because I can't read? What's wrong with not being able to read? <laughs> should I be ashamed because I can't read? I should be ashamed now. <laughs> yeah, you should. Um, wow, Let's By the way, be brief brief brief. It's, about, it's, about, it's about how the education system failed me. I did not fail the education system. The education system failed me. And I can read, by the way. I'm actually halfway decent. I don't, I'm actually not a quick reader. I read slowly. I'm not a quick reader either. I I, I don't read very quickly. I read at a... When, when, like when I, words on the TV screen, I be in panic mode. Okay, well, that, that's not me. I can read those pretty well. Oh, the, the epilogue in a movie? I'd be like, uh, 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 uh. Star Wars, you're like, uh. Um, when, uh what was I saying? Oh, but when it comes to... But reading does make me sleepy, though. Does reading make you me sleepy? Too. It does. But I want to say, is, that, like, do we, is it like a thing in our brain? Are we just wired differently? I don't know. I don't know. Probably it's probably something. Probably it's something to do with being read to his children at a time of sleep. Maybe the reason why I try to stop you from um seeing at the top of every episode what you were like obsessed with doing is because when they stop trying to copy off of the read, okay? Do they? They don't sing at the end of, at, at the beginning of every episode. Do you not listen? Do you not listen? To the okay, hold on, hold on. It also takes your brain power to interpret letters your eyes see and convert them into words and. Then, as your brain works hard and your eye muscles tire, it's natural they would need rest, causing your eyes. So, nigga, you fall asleep when you're reading because your brain is working on overtime. Your 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 brain, your fucking brain is on power drive. Yes, we've already acknowledged that I read slow and it's hard for me to read. What of it? We we I have this has been well documented and established. It is hard for me so, to read. So, I read very slow. So uh, exercise that brain a little more. Less talking, more reading. I've been reading my whole life. Reading is very... Some people just have a hard time reading. So, you got me, Monet. 
you, you, you shut me down. Yes. You made. I have a learning disability. You what, ate me up with that one. What's the what was the plan? What's the um <laughs> the thing you read the last time? You may trod me down in history with your words and twisted lies. But what I'm saying is, money. They do open up the, the every episode of the read. Uh, they they sing. Do you not like Kid? Why do you hate Kid Fury? This is I first of all, I love Kid Fury. He is very beautiful and he's very funny. I put you on Kid Fury he's back in the day when we were going to do interested. when we were going to do that um that number that I was putting together and I was like, "Bob, we need to do this candy number." Uh, this the the Candy Crush cuz he had a Candy Crush rant on his YouTube and I made a whole number of, Y'all, well, let me tell well, let me tell the story. And I'm told the story. So, Bob was back in town and um Trixie, Trixie Pixie Aventura and I used to do the help. And then Pixie was going away and Bob happened to be in town, like, you know, uh, from work. Uh, he, he's already, he already had been cast on Draggers and was working and touring and he happened to be in town. I was like, oh, Pixie's off this day. Can you do the help with me? He was like, yeah, sure. We need to like get a, like, we need to like create a number though. So like, I'm like at Bob's old house at 945 Amsterdam and we're sitting down and I'm like, I'm like, oh, we could do like something about like about like Candy Crush, like this, like candy, because Candy Crush was really big back then. Oh my god, we're dating ourselves, OD. <laughs> we, candy, bitch, I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> candy Crush was really big. So then, so I'm like, I, I, I find like this, like the Kid Fury had this like really, really, really funny Candy Crush rant on YouTube. So I ripped the whole video, and I'm intersplicing that with like different candy numbers, like Katy Perry song, all all numbers about candy. And um, what's on the count? Katy Perry about candy? California girls? No. Or maybe not. Someone has some. I don't remember. It was a bunch of candy songs, and then I finished making the whole mix. And Bob was, you know, when I, I just said we should do. I, I, I'm not feeling it. I don't like it. We should do something else. I was like, bitch. I just spent like three hours making this mix, and Bob vetoed the whole thing. It was very rude. Because Monet, Monet offered me a mix that was incredibly complicated with songs I did with a monologue I did not know. Asked me to learn it a few hours before the show. And was like, let's do it. Maybe that's how you do your performances. But I'm not interested. Personally. No, thank you. T.A., you got I didn't know it either. And, 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 we, and we've seen, we, know that you, we know that you will go and lip sync even on national TV not knowing words. <laughs> and Nicole, and, 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 um, Nicole Byers clocked you on that. <laughs> and you know what? At first... I was I at first I stood by you, but now I stand I stand with Nicole Byers. You didn't know the word. Okay, you, you didn't know the word. And she ate you up. You will add an S. She is one buyer. She's got multiple buyers. I'm talking. You, you don't know how many Nicoles are in her family. <laughs> she you have no clue. Jingle she has ball. a twin sister named also named Nicole Byers. <laughs> So they are the Nicole Byers. <laughs> Jingle Balls, Squid Games, <laughs> Nicole Byers. You are. <laughs> Bob, I would say Nicole Byers' opinion. <laughs> the other day, Bob came over here. He was like, what the hell? You keep on saying I'm a hood bitch. I'm a hood bitch. You, a hood bitch is at S. I'm not shit. a hood bitch. You are a hood bitch. I was literally sitting in the back seat of my car eating popcorn. Just literally, <laughs> by the way. Yo! Just eating popcorn. <laughs> we went to see Color Purple on Christmas morning. And then, so Bob is, I, I picked Bob up, brought him to the movie theater, and I drive him back home. So we're riding back home. This nigga is just in the back of the, the back seat of the car. Just, yeah, girl, we got, I mean, <laughs> just. But also, just, but also, why me. was I in the back seat, Monet? Oh, my God. <laughs> why was I in the back seat, Purple Monet? Because you were the first stop. You, everyone knows when you when you're dropping people off. The, Why was the, I in the back if there are multiple of the stops? To come the to purple, first, Monet. If the first person who's getting off sits in the back because it'll make because then if you were in the front seat, this one had to get up and get out. That doesn't make oh, any sense. So who's in the front seat? <laughs> Andy. Jacob, have you ever seen the back seat while Monet sits in the front seat, Jacob? Never. What? Jacob, that is not true. Room. Y'all are lying. <laughs> no, Jacob has sat in the backseat. Woman in the front seat plenty of times. And that's Woman not true. Seat. First of all, you have rarely given me a ride anywhere. Let's talk about that. Well, that's because you're never on time, and I don't have time to wait. I'm never on time. That is not I true. Come, I have to come by and pick you up. You're like literally mo, mo, uh, pussyfooting around. Mo, mo, Bob, you are literally making sure you. Are, As they say, come up from the gas my ass is not your ass. The gas lighting my ass is not your ass. Is girl. <laughs> Okay, last thing before we get into uh, the, the queens. Oh my god, Danielle Brooks. I, I so I got to go to like a little thing. I saw the I first saw the color purple, the new one, the musical. I mean, the movie musical that, that came out on Christmas Day. Todrick had like a special screening, and then so I went with him to go see it at a thing. You and went with who? 
kidding. I love Tom. I'm just kidding. And, and it was just like especially screen, like Oprah was there, like the entire cast, Oprah, everyone was there, and they did like a talk back afterwards. And after you met Oprah? Yeah. Like you met her or you was in the room with her? No, I just in the room. I didn't meet her. I was just met her. I, I mean, I was in the room with her. I did not meet her, no. Is she um, you know what? In real life, Oprah just looks like a normal black lady. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you see like, you know, you like look, some people look rich. Did she not look rich? Some right. people like, see them like they look rich. Like I saw Michelle Obama like walking at Essence, and I was like, that she looks like a rich woman. Like she just looks, she just exudes wealth. And not that uh, obviously we all know Oprah is a billionaire, but Oprah doesn't give like I don't know, it just wasn't the same energy. But anyway, she looks she looked amazing. She looks incredible. And Danny, this is my second time seeing it. Danielle Brooks. Is, who, in the, who, who looked rich there? Who in the cast looked rich? Oh my god, this I feel like this is so problematic to talk about. You don't. I mean, you don't have to answer the question. You can, you can just say I don't care. To I mean, who looks rich? I mean, they all you know, look. You know who's been looking extremely opulent lately? Fantasia, Fantasia Bruno has been looking incredibly opulent. Her, go, guys, her on this press tour. Every look, it's a banger after banger after banger. Her looks are incredible. She looks like she spent a lot of money. To look the way she looks, because as Taraji let Netflix. us know, these well, these ladies, they, they so when you go to do press, like you get paid to do your film, there is not a budget, or not that I'm aware of, a budget to do press, right? So when you are doing after you film the movie, you get paid your, you get paid uh, Terrence Howard, he got paid his twelve thousand dollars for Hustle and Flow. When he had to go do the promo for the movie, to go do all the interviews and flying to different premieres in different cities, I think they play for your flights and stuff. But to get like your your hair, your looks, your makeup, all that stuff is under artist pays for that out of pocket. Like that is not can confirm. Say it again. Can confirm. I mean, when when you when you uh, when y'all did uh, all the promo for uh, All Star Seven, were you paying for any of those looks? Right. No. No. You pay for all that yourself out of pocket. They they, pay, they buy your hotel. They buy your flight. But you do everything else yourself. Everything else. And, they, and so, they'll get you from the hotel to the to the to the thing. Too. Yeah, yeah, they get you from the hotel to the to to the event or to the press, whatever it is, and then back. But everything else is your own on on your own dime. And then if you have a hair and and glam team that you trust that you want to like, because you don't want to gamble on trusting some bitch from fucking North Hollywood, like you're like, I'm gonna fly my own team because like I know what the quality of the work is, and I, that's what I want to co-sign on. And this is gonna be very big. I'm, I'm, it's gonna be seen by a lot of people. Like you know, you you fly that in too. So it, it, there are a lot. Of Jeremy people. Carey did the All Stars two promo out of drag. He did the Ooh. whole thing out of drag. Jeremy Carey. Oh yeah, I remember All-Stars that. Two. He did almost the entire promo out of drag. All right, we should we should hop into our. Uh, yeah. Sorry, give give Danielle her flowers, then we should hop into our our our, our topic. Yes, Danielle Brooks is a she is I'm just in awe of her talent. I saw her on Broadway doing it. Um, the revival with Cynthia Revo. She was fucking stellar. Then in this movie, she is. Chef's kiss, amazing, so funny, so much, so much, so much range. She's just amazing, and so and Coleman Domingo also. Fucking, I love Coleman Domingo. What a, a talented actor, and to get get to witness them in such an iconic film was really dope. I echo that sentiment. Um, we are getting back into uh, Every Root Girl Part Nine. I want to say eight. And we are on eight. Is it eight? Which one is it, Jacob? Eight? We're kind of eight. like we're kind of like one back. Like we just we're we're about to do season nine, and we're this is part eight. Yeah. Part eight. We are on season nine of, RuPa- of RuPaul's Drag Race. We are going to talk about uh, the wig wizard, the witch of the locks, uh, Miss James Mansfield. James Mansfield. I like James Mansfield. I don't I don't think I've ever. Oh, yeah, I did. I met her. I met her with you. Well, you probably met her before, but we met her together at the Trixie, Mat- Trixie Hotel. Trixie Trixie motel. motel party thing that they had in Palm Springs. That's when I first met her in like IRL. Um, she is uh she's she's Mexican. She's from Wisconsin, Maddie, Wisconsin. J- James J- James is Mexican. She she went Puerto Rican. She went, Puerto Rican. She went European. She's Mexican. Okay, I thought she. Yeah, she's Mexican. Um, and. <laughs> and um, she's 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 made a big name for herself in the uh, the wig space, specifically on YouTube. And her and I have had a lot of interactions because of the wig, because of the um, the infamous first first impressions wig. Um, her and I, uh, she recreated it, and then I sent her the actual wig, and then she restyled it, and then she redid it in human hair. So I I now have three versions of that wig. 
three. That's three too many. And again, Marco, I'm so sorry that Monet is disrespecting your work like this. We'll we'll cover that later, though. Whoa! She shares a birthday with Monet Exchange. Me and James Manson have the same birthday? And Jacob, excuse you. Oh and Victoria God. Justice. Who the fuck is Victoria Justice? She's uh, from the TV... <laughs> She's from like one of those. It was like Nickelodeon or something. It was like uh, the t- yeah, TV show Victorious. Yeah, Victorious. But Bob, you don't even know. You just repeating what Jacob said. She's from the Nickelodeon show Victorious. Anyway, is she not Jacob? It, it might not be like Nickelodeon, but yeah, it's not, it might not be Nickelodeon. Yeah. Though, <laughs> <laughs> she wow. also reviewed the Bobo palette for us um, on her page. So shout out to her. And you're gonna yeah. in, in there. Maybe there'll be another palette coming your way. Yes, James. Okay. Yeah, James went home pretty early in season nine. She was 14th place in season nine, which was. But she did pretty well on All Stars, though. Yeah, in All Stars, she was seventh place. Uh, An image burned into my mind of James Mansfield was her doing a little front rollover. That is burned into my brain. On the on the on the on the 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 cheerleading challenge. challenge. Yeah, I'm Drag Race needs to bring back physical challenges like that. I'm so mad I never got to do a physical challenge like that. Not the season four wrestling one or the season nine tumbling one. From what I understand, there's a reason why they're not doing that that uh, cheerleading anymore. Apparently, it was it was it was probably dangerous. Um, but shout out to Jane Mansfield and her little voice. Her voice. She's someone who changes her voice in drag. Mm -hmm. You know what, Bob? You know, I'm weak. She does. I'm gonna try changing my voice in drag. Can you do the squeak? <laughs> no, like, have you heard her squeak? No. Can you, wait, right, let's let's do maybe an edit pause. I want Monet to look up the squeak and see if she can do it. I can't do it. I probably I also can't. can't. I can't make noise while breathing in. <laughs> yeah. I can't do. I can't phonate in in, or I can't make a. Ooh, that, ooh, <laughs> ooh, that just took it out of me. I type in James Mansfield squeak and ain't nothing coming in. I don't know how to find it. On YouTube? I'll Hold on one second, please. Well, this is a break time, so do you want to just say that we're going to break so they can edit it and then we'll come back after the break? Yeah, okay, yeah. And let's, let's take a little break. We're going to find a squeak and we'll be right back. Okay, I can't find it, so whatever. <laughs> um, I couldn't find the squeak, but I, but I did find Jane Mansfield doing the squeak. I, I didn't realize that squeak was from Jane Mansfield. I didn't realize that. Oh, yeah, she's very, she's, I, I wouldn't say James is a period, I mean, her character is obviously based off of that person, but I don't feel like her drag is, like, trapped in this era, like, that bitch from the new season, the season 16 bitch. Robbie Turner? No. Uh, Plasma. 16. Plasma. Pla- I thought you said from my era. No, I said the, se- I literally said the season 16 bitch. Oh, I thought you said, I don't know why I felt, whatever. Um. But James's aesthetic is so remember, very. One of my favorite things you do, you have a lot of people like, no, 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 whatever. Another point. Um. Anyway, you you love a uh, whatever. Another point. Anyway, let's go on to um, <laughs> Kamora Black, who is such an interesting. She's like an enigma to me. Why? I don't know. Before she, before on Drag Race, she was just so like interesting and like her her like out of drag persona was like so butch and like was it tattoos and like kind of like i don't think butch know. i remember camora black was someone people were were speculating about being on the show for a while but I, she had a lot of tattoos and stuff i wouldn't say she was butch though she was always pretty femme but it was in pictures it was like it was like a lot of this like a lot of like oh was it i don't remember actually like a lot of like hmm and she's non-binary, um, and she, yeah, she, she's so interesting to me. She's well, just so interesting to me. Well, a big thing on her on her season, people were like, "You're fake. Your cheeks are fake. They're filler, or filler, or whatever." And then she like showed like either she showed pictures of her when she was younger, or she showed like uh, pictures of like her family and stuff. And people were like, she's like, "No, girl, this is what the cheeks like." She's like, "I'm, I'm, I'm. I don't know what uh, she is." Vietnamese. What country she said her family's She's from? Vietnamese. Vietnamese. She was like, bitch, my family is Vietnamese American, and this is how our motherfucking cheeks look. And is that how then, Plastic Family looks? I don't know. I've never seen Plastic Family. Is that how Plastic looks? Which, no, but maybe Plastic is, is an anomaly. <laughs> I mean, 
I, I, I obviously don't have any strong opinion about whether or not Kimura has had any. Apparently, uh, you do. No, I'm just saying, like, I don't know that she, Vietnamese is like. I don't. Was she like? This is how Vietnamese people look because I don't know that Vietnamese people look like like they've had work done. Like, I went to school. Like, again, Atlanta has a very high Vietnamese population. Like, uh, a lot of the Asian people in Atlanta are Vietnamese. So I grew up around a lot of Vietnamese people, and I don't particularly remember. Like, oh, this is how Vietnamese people look. Maybe it's maybe she meant like a specific ethnicity within Vietnam. I think she was. I think she was just saying her family. She's like, this is how my family look, y'all. Oh, well, the way you pitched it was like, this is how Vietnamese people look. That's why I I haven't heard her say this. So I thought, no, no, I no. Thought no. She, she was saying like, like she was saying I'm Vietnamese American and this is how my family look. Like this is how we look. I'm not saying that all Vietnamese people. So she's saying like this is I'm Vietnamese American and this is how we look. My family. No, like two like two separate things. Yeah. Two, oh, and on a side note, to anyone wondering, I'm Vietnamese. Now let's talk about something completely separate. This is how my family looks. Uh, have you seen a clip of Michael Jackson? Uh, they're like, "You had your nose done." No, uh, chin. Stop it. Have you seen this? No. Oh God. Well, we cannot pause me. every five minutes for you to find a video. <laughs> no, but I want you. I want you to know. What I'm talking about. Oh, God. Uh, wait, so <laughs> people are using it online, and it's just Michael Jackson being like, <clears throat> they're like, you've had your nose done. No, stop it. And he's like calling out all the procedures that he feels like Michael Jackson had done. Oh my God. I, I of course, I, and of course, I can't find this. You have got to put the phone down. <laughs> you are Delulu. <laughs> what here it is. You, the photographs of you. If I look at them, no, it's from... called adolescence. It's called growing and changing. It's... Yeah, but even the shape of your face has changed. No, it has not. I've had no plastic surgery on my face. Just my nose. It helped me. But it... you've had here it implants is. in your cheeks. Oh God! You've had a dimple made oh, in your please, chin. Please, please. You've had please. your lips enlarged. Oh, please. You've had your eyelash, eyelids reconstructed. Eyelids reconstructed. It's stupid. None of Come it's on. true. None of it's true. So, so that I, I feel like that was what it was with her. Be like, no, it's stupid. It's stupid. None of it's true. None of it's true. <laughs> I mean, were... she's definitely had some body work done. I mean, where Kamora has, she said she didn't. No, I mean her body. She don't talk about her body, bitch. No, that she is said not she didn't. Her she said ass. she never had anything done. That is not her ass and her hips. All I'm, I don't know. If she, all I'm saying is, she said she never had anything done. Well, this is her. This is how. No, she said her shape. face. She said her face yeah. is untouched. <laughs> and they were, they were. I don't know if you remember this. They were, they were going down her whole body. She kept being like, "No." And then she goes, "I don't remember. Did I? No, <laughs> I don't think I did. I haven't had. Any, I don't think I've had anything done. Do you remember this, Jacob? Am I crazy? I don't remember this. Yeah, no, this happened. I think it might have been untucked, but uh, this definitely happened. Yeah, they were like, "You didn't have ass or anything." She goes, "No, I don't think I've had anything done." They're like, "What do you, you don't think?" <laughs> well, that, see. I, 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 uh, the bar is working out. We could not afford, and, uh, uh Trinity was there, and Trinity was like, Come on, girl, <laughs> I don't work when I see it. Yeah, yeah. that's what it was. Cause, yeah, but she kept, I mean, I, obviously, I don't know if Kamora's had anything done, but she said, She said she ain't had nothing done. She said, Stop <laughs> it, it's stupid. If you it's see stupid. Kamora Black, yeah, there's no way this bitch has not had her. It's stupid, it's stupid. <laughs> it's stupid. No way, Come on. no way, no, nothing. <laughs> um. She also uh, famously uh, did not wear, had never done drag without hip pads ever. And she did them on the show one time. I think she like cried because she she was like, I'm so, I feel so brave to have not, to have done drag without my hip pads. And everyone was like, this is wild. And then the outfit she got eliminated in, Alaska bought it on, on, on eBay auction for like $1,500. It was that, it was that like that white, like a, a like a, a sailor outfit, right? It was a fur thing. It was something furry. A furry? It looked like fur. It was like a uh, fur pieces and like pe fur pelts and some sort of a. Uh, oh. Maybe Jake can find it. Kamora's uh, elimination. Yeah, Jake, can you can you pull that up? Uh, but in the meantime, let's move um, on to a queen. your favorite Bob's favorite queen. What makes her my favorite queen? Because that story about y'all on the cruise ship, I'll never forget it. The uh, uh, story of me regaling how much I loved her. No, me and Charlie did have an awkward run in. She did. She did DM me. I never responded to it. Um, being like, I would love to clear this all up. And I was like, I think I'm clear. <laughs> Let's make it clear. 
Um, Charlie Hydes was the oldest. I think she's one of the oldest contestants who's ever competed on Drag Race, right? For America, I think she is the oldest one. Yeah, she was 50 when she competed. She also claims she's she the only Charlie Hydes in the world, which is so interesting to me. Say it again? She also claims to be the, on, the only Charlie Hydes in the world, which is so interesting to me. That's an interesting tidbit. I, I mean, that's honestly, it's fierce. I mean, I'm the only Monet exchange in the world. That's fierce. She's born in on um, July 12th, 1964. She's 59 years old and she lives in the UK. So she's also the first queen who lived in the UK to compete in America because she clearly has some sort of dual citizenship. Actually, I don't know if that's that's not clear. I'm assuming she because she's an American citizen, she probably still Sorry, has her th their pronouns are they them. They them. Charlie's they them? Yes. Oh. Well, they they seem to be have they see I think they have like dual citizenship or maybe because they're American. I don't know. But how, let me say, Bob, I, will make, I, Bob, will make, uh, Bob will make up a story about these bitches. He'll be like, she's actually a dual American uh, Irish because she was no, born by she, way of She France. lives in the UK, so she's obviously a citizen of the UK. That's clear. <laughs> you don't, and she's American. You don't have to be a citizen to live there. Well, but she can work there. So she well, she has some sort of work permit. She can legally live in the UK. I, say, I, I, got family, I got family living in the UK, and they're not citizens, Okay. Well, I, okay, I don't know. I say there no. Um, I can't. Uh, okay, I I don't understand all the immigration laws of the UK. I'm assuming that she's a UK citizen. I do not know this, but I do know that she is an American living in the UK. That I can say for sure. This How about is, that? This, this is another Bobism. Monet, I don't claim to know the geopolitical <laughs> rules of uh, immigration law. I don't know. <laughs> But I do know, wait, if I move to the UK and become a citizen there, I still am a citizen of the United States, right? I don't revoke my US citizenship. I can come back. Yeah, you're going to have dual citizenship. Yeah. Yeah. So she probably has dual citizenship. She's married. Hey, did, 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 she have a, did she have a British accent on the show? No, she's not British, Monet. She's American. But uh, bitch, Madonna wasn't British. She had a British accent. What's your point? Okay. And you're not Jamaican, but you have a Jamaican accent. So now what? <laughs> let's let's talk about it, Mary. Uh, but Charlie Hyde is she had a very iconic um, send home because she just literally it was her versus Trinity and she just do stood something, there. Charlie. She just stood there. If y'all aren't did not watch season nine, it's worth just going back to watch the episode of Charlie Hyde's lip sync at the bottom because it was honestly one of the saddest things I've ever seen on the show. She just apparently, stood according there. to other girls, it is confirmed that she did have a broken rib. How did she break? Oh, from the from the cheerleading thing. Cheerleading, <laughs> a, a broken knee and a broken rib. She had a broken knee. Eureka O'Hara broke her knee on the on the um oh, right. her knee. Girl, that, that's why they're not. And Monet is like, bring back more cheering stuff. Also, uh, Charlotte Hyde is another uh, serial blackface artist. Mm. <laughs> She's another one. She did it. <laughs> the difference is, I don't know that Charlie Hyde. Well, maybe she. I think Charlie has done some atoning or something. But Charlie Hyde also was doing it like really, like really recently. Oh. Like, like I think she was doing it like. Either like right before or right after she filmed Drag Race, which is wild. That is kind of crazy. That's kind of wild. Not 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 uh, not not Charlie Hyde and Shane Dawson and Justin Trudeau is all he can. So yeah, Charlie Hyde is is a, is an interesting interesting girly, and I'm probably gonna get another DM from her, and I will not answer. So Charlie Hyde. Delete the draft. I'm not gonna answer. It, it's it's also interesting, like these girls that after Drag Race that just disappear, right? Like like on on a Robbie Turner, I've never like has Charlie Hyde's posted recently. I want to go ahead. Let me go see. Yeah, it. Charlie Hyde's post. Charlie, Charlie Hyde does bingo. She's like she has like a whole bingo thing. She's like really big in bingo in the digital bingo world. She's really stuff. big in bingo. Charlie Hyde has not disappeared. You just haven't seen her. Oh, yeah. Robbie Turner disappeared intentionally. Robbie Turner is intentionally avoiding the uh, public eye, and Robbie Turner has disappeared. Charlie I mean, Hyde on. All right, what, what I meant to say was Robbie Turner has intentionally avoided the public eye, and Charlie Hyde, you just she's just not in your in your uh. Orbit, I guess. Charlie Hyde's TV posted six hours ago. A few weeks ago, while showing my neighbor the new sunroom, I joked, I'm going to pay one of the farmers across the valley to put up a sign so I can feel like I'm living in Hollywood. On Christmas Eve, we got a text message. Look out your window. My 70-year-old neighbor had erected a sign on his garden pergola. 
of me in blackface. In I don't want to stop you, but this doesn't seem interesting. I don't know that this is like I don't know. I wanna, do I want to hear this? What, what is this about? Me in blackface in Hollywood. Wait, what? Wait, did you make that part last part up? No. <laughs> Wait, okay. I I apologize. That is interesting. What is this on? Is this Instagram? What is this? I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Oh, yeah, bitch, don't read this boring-ass fucking tweet or text. Just Can we move on from Troy Hides? She's my favorite queen. I want to tell one. No, I'm kidding, I'm done. I don't have anything to say about her. Let's go on to uh, a very uh, talented, but also low-key controversial, drag queen, Eureka. And I think she's dropped the O'Hara, actually. Really? I think so, yeah. Wow. You Eureka is from Johnson City, Tennessee. Eureka was my co-star, and we're here for three seasons. Um, Eureka, you mean was... your boss? Continue. My boss? How was she my boss? Eureka was the main girl. We all know that. Okay, nice. Eureka was my co-star, and we're here. Uh, three-time Glad Award winner, Eureka O'Hara. Uh, Peabody Award winner, Eureka O'Hara. Um, and she is. Uh... You on somebody's body, okay? Would you say she's probably the most famous queen from Tennessee? No. From Drag Race. From Drag Race, yes. I mean, I think Bunny is the most famous queen from Tennessee. I'd agree. But from Drag Race, it'll be Eureka. I mean, I mean, Donna Parton is the most famous. Who else is from Tennessee? Donna Parton. No, drag ra- drag a drag race. Donna Parton's Eureka. not doing drag. Donna Parton says she's doing drag. So you're gonna do you're gonna deny Donna Parton's drag. Eureka, Lady Bunny, who else? Uh, Cameron Michaels. Oh yeah, Cameron. Damn. You you should you should remember that name, and that's the name you should remember, <laughs> and you know why. Uh, also, yeah. also, um, it's Ora Mayari and Jane Dior Fierce. Yeah, Ora Mayari, the bitch that you you spent a whole season of watchery dragging her through the mud, calling her Not outfits her. dumb, silly. Y- yes, that was you. She was literally wasn't a whole season. She was there for three episodes. How was it a whole season? How did I spend the whole season? How was it a whole season? You are so mean. Aura, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Aura. How was it a whole season? That is so mean, Bob. That's not nice. You tried to set me up, and I and I took the bait and took the whole ship down, bitch. <laughs> Last night, when they took me to her, took me to her. Well, actually, I, I I drove myself there actually to her home, and I played a game which. It's called Secret Hitler. I wish it would call it something else. Because it's such a fun game, but I just hate that it's called that. I, I hate that it's called that. Like, like why is it called that? <laughs> like, what's it after this break? Are you that one friend in the friend group that loves to treat yourself? It's okay. Honestly, we all do it. And you know you, right? You get that pedicure and you get that extra 10-minute foot massage. And you get the green tea infused lotion. Like You refuse to make coffee at home because that fancy coffee shop is the best one downstairs. Well, if you treat yourself to the top options with everything in life, why settle when finding a doctor? It is your health after all, girl. Enter ZocDoc, the place where you can find and book tens of thousands of top tier doctors all with verified patient reviews so don't settle go for go go for a second best baby go for the best and find the rock doctor for you with zocdoc you've got more options than you know zocdoc is free and the websites where you can search and compare highly rated in network baby those are those are the words that taste delicious in network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online and once you find the doctor you want you can just book them immediately no more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist also like what i love about zocdoc y'all is that they have like real patient reviews so they be in these <laughs> review streets roasting these doctors oh yeah dr MacArthur, mm-hmm, she was late her breasts stink and she has horrible bedside manner. Like, they will really be letting these doctors have it. And you know what? When these doctors have the nerve to charge so much money, I can review how I want to. And I like that ZocDoc lets me read real reviews from real people. Go to ZocDoc.com slash rivalry and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash rivalry. ZocDoc.com slash rivalry. And we're back. Uh, I just hate that it's called that, but it is a very interesting game. But they could have called it literally anything else. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why they chose Secret Hitler. I mean, there is never a time that that would have been okay. Like, even I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe because it's like salacious, but like, even if they, even if they just called it Secret Fascist. <laughs> I I just don't know why. They, why? 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 
<laughs> why does it have to be called Secret of Hitler? Like, why? I don't know, girl. I don't know. Monet, okay, let's. Monet's a, a stakeholder. Monet's one of the creators. <laughs> But it was a very fun game, and 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 so the first round we were playing the fucking game. I knew that Bob was a, a secret fascist, and I'm trying to like hit everyone on game. But Bob is so good at fucking conniving and deceiving these 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 fucking idiots. Everyone is like, "Oh no, not Bob!" I'm like, "Oh my god, he is absolutely a fucking fascist." No one fell for it. Then the second game, th- then we had two people playing that were just chaos agents. They were just. They were they were anti. I, it was it was maddening to me. They were, they were both third party. They were both <laughs> they third, were third party. party. They were libertarians. <laughs> they and were just not I helping. Monet, their- I immediately clocked Monet. Monet, and I was like, everyone, don't fall for Monet shit. Eat her up, eat her up, y'all. And then Bob does this thing. And Bob goes, everyone listen to the sound of my voice. It is at this. <laughs> y'all gotta remember but this. Everyone time. look at your phone. I said, everyone. Look at your phone and, and mark the time because you will remember where you were and what time it was when I told you this was a fascist, this was a fascist, and that one is secret Hitler. <laughs> and then at the end of the thing, this, uh, this guy was like, "Yeah, it was it was eight fifty You were right, <laughs> but it was fun. It was a fun little um, Christmas uh, Christmas. What, I just wish they would call it something else. <laughs> there must have been someone else being like, "Guys, your game is so fun and it can really bring a lot of joy to parties." But like, why does that have to be called this? Yeah. Can you talk about the the white elephant gift exchange. Oh my God! The oh my white. God. This is very old thing with Eureka O'Hara, the Elephant Queen. <laughs> <laughs> the white elephant gift exchange. Mean, mean, the white elephant gift exchange was very fun. So everyone, if you, if you don't know, if you don't know what, what we call it, we called it an, an interracial ele- elephant because when we um, say white elephant, we're not talking about Eureka. <laughs> and to be clear, Eureka identified. Eureka is an elephant. She says she's the Elephant Queen. I'm not making. She's white, and she says she's the Elephant Queen. I'm not calling her an elephant. <laughs> She called herself the elephant queen. Nigga, you don't want to, you don't want exp- none of us was none of us said nothing. You was ex- you 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 went like <laughs> I was doing my nigga my nigga menage impersonation. Anyway, so we did the interracial elephant party last night. Everyone brings a gift and you get to take a gift, and then someone can either steal your gift or open up another random gift. So we go on the thing. Now, when I do white elephants, I thought they had to be new things. I didn't think they, they could be used. I think you can make whatever you want. So they're usually either like a uh, you set a price limit, but this one was uh, used things from your home, which Monet did not tell me. By the way, I just happened to randomly bring a used item from my home. Monet did not tell me. Monet didn't tell me it was a potluck. I came empty-handed. I had no. I did not know this because Monet didn't send me the the text, and Andy was like, "I thought you were going to send Bob the flyer with the information." Monet did not tell me that it, that, that, that it was supposed. I just lucked out and grabbed something from my home. Is, am I lying or am I telling the truth? And you're covering your face in shame no, because it's the truth. I'm covering my face in fucking rage, okay? Number one. Rage at me? You didn't tell me. <laughs> Number I showed one. up with no food. Money, I know that I would have went to the store and grabbed something. I showed up with nothing. Number one. Bob never made plans of spending Christmas with me. I did not know Bob was even going to be in town. Because I wasn't invited. Four days ago, but I was like, "Oh, Monet, what, what are you doing?" I was like, "I was like, I'm, I'm home." He's like, I'm, "I'm coming home tomorrow." I was like, "Oh, pick him from the airport." I pick him up from the airport. Happily, a trip that normally takes me 40 minutes took me an hour and 50 minutes because of the rain in LA. But I gleefully did it because I missed my best friend. I then drove, why are you complaining? I drove him home. Then why are you complaining? If it was so good, why are you complaining? <laughs> then the next day, I was like, oh, "What you doing on Christmas Day?" I was like, "Um, oh, uh, well, let's go to the movies." I was like, "Work." I was like, "We have to go early because Andy and I are doing a white elephant. You want to come over?" Um, he was like, yeah, I'll come over for Christmas. Boom. All the information I was given. Okay, all the information but, I was given. Bitch, I wasn't thinking about all of that. I was just like, you could also it was such so last minute. Like, what's that guy's name? The guy whose name I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Uh Sand Sand Sandal. Anyway, because I happen to know that he got his invite last minute, but he knew to bring food. He Spit knew to Lally. bring stuff from home. Yeah, he knew to bring food. Yeah, that's he, Andy. Knew, he got all I didn't the pitch. I didn't even know that it was. I didn't know everyone had to bring food. I didn't even. I was that gift that invitation Andy sent to everyone. I didn't even get that. I wasn't even on that. So you weren't even invited. What were you doing at the party then? <laughs> this is my motherfucking house, and I paid the mortgage on this bitch. That's why. We know Andy pays most of the mortgage. Do not even act like. Okay, yeah, you pay the mortgage. Okay, okay. I have a, I have a bridge. First of all, what is the to tell you that money is first of all money pays the mortgage on her home back in Brooklyn. <laughs> which is why, which is why she can't pay the mortgage on this home as well. So Andy had to co-sign for this house. And pay <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh huh. Anyway, so we're doing this white elephant thing, and then so this so so this person, um, Spit Lolly, made this, like, huh? 
Interracial elephant. Yeah, interracial elephant. So we're doing the, the gift exchange, and then uh, give me bleep his name because this part is shady. Bleep his name. Well, which part? Are you, which part are you telling? The, 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 the part. When, when, so, so then, um, wait, the last one or the one in the middle that was that the one, one in the middle. The, gift? the one in the middle. Yeah, he bleep his name because I don't want to. No, he won't care. He won't name. care. I promise he won't care. You just met him. No, I, I. Oh, the the one who made the gift. Yes, bleep his name. Okay, yeah. So then Patrick, uh, who is good friends of me and Bob, well, he's he's good friends with, sorry, Andy, and now obviously I'm friends with Patrick, blah, blah, blah. So Patrick um, pulls up this thing and he opens it and it's like, uh, I'm going to go get it really quick, actually. So while Monet's going to grab it, I will try to describe what happened. So he opens up the gift and as soon as he opens it, the the very first words that come out of his mouth was, uh, did some high schooler make this? Like, did did some high school student make this item? And and then the guy who who brought it said, "Actually, I I made it just last week." And then everyone everyone at the party was like, "Cause he was like, what untalented, no, like beginner ass, lame <laughs> high school artist." Who, who, what idiot did you guys bring this? Made this? You brought this from? And he was like, "I, I made it, and, and I, I made it last week." It's, 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 <laughs> Which it's honestly, it is one of, in my opinion, one of the sweetest gifts of the night because like this person made it with love, like they made an actual thing, which and I love it. I think it's really dope. We're keeping it. Like I, I love this gift. I think it's very, it's very cool. It is cute, but him, but the gifter and the gifter, they were, they were both looking crazy after that one. I know, but the thing, but also, but thank God it's a situation like us, right, where immediately we started, like, making light of it and making jokes about it to bring the temperature down in the room, because, like, I'm like, people who aren't funny, how do they handle stuff like this? Would it just be, like, awkward after it that? It probably would have been better to just move on and not cause a scene. <laughs> It probably would have been better just to not say anything and then just let the guy go, I made it last week, and then just kind of that be the end of it. But we low-key were all like, oh, my God. <laughs> Ate him up with that one. Ate him up. <laughs> the library is open, <laughs> darling. So that happened. And then later, Andy. So really, right before everyone got there, I I, I gave away some, some earbuds I had um, from a thing. And then so Andy comes down, and he brings down a, bu a butt plug. And he like is grabbing. I was like, "What are you doing with that?" He was like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this for the white elephant." I was like, "Andy, you cannot." I was like, go, "I was like, go get a brand, go buy a brand new one. You a used butt plug to a fucking." The whole thing is supposed to be for use. That's the the point of it. That the, you you give not a stuff. butt plug, Bob. Well, someone wanted it. I will say this: someone, someone literally came back and grabbed it. So then, my friend, so then Andy, so Doug, another person came with his mom, his like seventy year old mom from Brazil who doesn't speak a whole lot of English. And then, so it's her turn. It's like towards the end. There are two gifts left. There's the idol was the butt plug and it's another gift bag. So then she goes and she and she brought the gift bag. She wasn't gonna open that one. So then she opens the. She's unwrapping the, the and Andy's sitting there like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. And she's like trying to like. We have the footage. We have dual footage. I filmed Andy. Monet filmed the mom. And we'll, we'll post it. And then she's like trying to like. She's unwrapping the thing and she reveals. She's like, oh my god. And she like she like goes to like hit Andy with it. She's like, well, I can't believe like like what? And she's like, like looking at Andy. She is she is befouled. She is. She is aggrieved, disgusted that we that these that these homosexuals over here just acting crazy. <laughs> so then the last person goes, and he goes to open her gift, and it's fully a purple dildo. She brought the dildo. She brought the dildo to the party. <laughs> also, before I get back to Rika, I would say I bought a great gift. I bought the uh, the Renaissance Renaissance World Tour photo book. Yeah, which all right. That. Back to your recap. Money, you have any um any interesting experiences? Well, we really have not done anything about Rika. You have any interesting experiences with Rika? You know, I met you, Rika, on I mean, I I, I don't want to talk about Mike's because we're gonna talk about later. Her. Are we gonna talk about her later? What do you mean later? She's on season 10. Or during the Diva series? No. no. We we only did we only did Shangela once. We uh so I think that now is the time. Okay. Yeah, so um, Eureka, I met obviously Eureka on season 10. Eureka was a lot of personality because Eureka had, I remember, okay, I remember us all being like kind of gagged because Eureka had done Drag Race before or she was there, you know, for four episodes. She kind of knew like, <clears throat> like a little more than we did, right? Like the, all of us, we each brought like one outfit, one wig, like for each thing where Eureka, because she'd done it before, she knew sometimes you want to swap things out. 
So she bought like multiples of things. And we were all like, that's an advantage. Because we don't have that luxury. We don't, we can't swap shit out because you've done it before. So you can like bring a whole, you can like swap things out and try this wig with this. Where we were just all super like this. This, this, this. this. Wait, why? Why didn't you have the option to bring multiple options? Because this is the thing. Like when you when you do when you do draggers before, you realize that's a thing. But going into the first time, you're more conscious of the weights of your bag. Make sure they're all fifty pounds, and like you just like don't want to bring any extra things. You don't think it's allowed. But it's also pretty common for. I mean, it's not like Rika's the first queen to come back. Like it's I pretty know. common for a queen to for I, a queen to come I, back I, and have a a slight advantage because they've done the competition. Well, the other thing I was also thinking about is Eureka because she was on a season already. She like she did the season nine tours and she started doing the show. So she also was working and had a lot bigger budget to spend on her outfits than uh, the queens did well, because she came back. Too, lots of drag queens who go into drag race in the first season have bigger budgets than queens who are on the same season. You know what I mean? So like obviously. All drag queens aren't starting at the same uh, fiscal point. Everyone's not starting from the same amount of money, regardless. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, Eureka, was- I didn't have anyone. I didn't have any returners on my season. We had a returner from my season. Eureka was fun. Um, she, I, I, I'm really sad I was not there for the her and Vixen fight. Like, because I was on stage in the bottom, I got to see it. But I now seeing how fierce and how like iconic it was, I'm just really sad I missed it. Well, you wanted to be around for it? Yes. In the room. In the room where it happened. Can you name there, that musical? There, there is. Uh, Can you name that musical? No, I don't know. No. In the room where it happened. I want to be in the room. Is that Tony Braxton? Hamilton. I said musical. Oh. Yeah, Tony Braxton the musical. Well, you sound, you sound, you, you sound like you were doing a very Tony. It's <laughs> very Tony Braxton. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't really have any stories about Eureka, to be honest. We've done. Some gigs and stuff. Eureka is also a professional queen. She's normally on time. Eureka is like ready to go. Like she's one of, in my opinion, one of the professional queens. Yeah, Eureka. Eureka's had a, a, a she had a, some public controversies around race stuff, which we've actually talked oh about. Oh my on the god, Nicker. Yes. Which we talk about on the podcast with Eureka actually, and she's we also. Yeah, we had her on the, we had her on the uh, the live episode that we yes. did. Uh, Yes, yes. And then we also had, uh, she also uh, has had a, a public struggle with uh, substance abuse as well. Yeah. Which um, I think she's on the men from now. You know what I mean? Yeah, Eureka. Bless her. Let's move on to uh, Aja, who is one of the truly fiercest performers I think I've ever met in my life. I mean, undeniable and by the way truly from brooklyn not pretend like some people who moved to new jersey and moved to atlanta and moved to st lucia for a collected total of 12 years a person who's actually born and raised in new york city and stayed there until she did drag race a real new yorker you're frozen am i but jacob is he frozen for you too I can't think he's saying. No, he's not frozen for me. Oh. But you know, I'm not frozen for the listeners. They heard me. Let's put it that way. So you'll have, you'll have to just you'll have to tune into the episode to find out what I said. No, thank you. What do you think about Aja? Um, I remember Aja from when I first started in drag, and that's when Aja, Momo Shade, and um, B Ames. They were they used to call them well, Thorgen or. <laughs> Right. They used to come around. That's back when Aja's name was Aja Injection. She would have she would have syringes on all of her fingers. It was, I don't know why that was a thing. Where was she getting these syringes from? Probably the CVS. You know, because syringes don't all have needles in them. A syringe and a needle aren't the same thing. Got it. Well, she'd have these other things. She'd always injection. And she used to like, she was part of ballroom back then. And and, and she was underage, of course. Aja was probably what, like 18, 19 back then? She used to come up to the clubs. Oh, girl, I, I met Aja before you. I met Aja when she was like 16, sneaking into the clubs. Um, well, how, let's see how old is she now. I met Aja in 2012. And Aja is. Gosh, is 29 years old. So 12, uh, what's, what's today? 20, 20, 2023? 20, so 11 minus. She was like uh, seventeen. I was I was eighteen in twenty twenty twelve, and uh, she's like a year older than me. So she was like seventeen, eighteen. I met Aja before I met you. 
I knew Ajman, she was literally 16 years old, sneaking into the club before B. Ames even moved to the city. Um, when B. Ames, by the time B. Ames moved in, she was actually, Aja had really stepped it up and had really become like this, like really fierce queen around New York City. Aja's also someone who's kind of had a bit of a back and forth with the world of drag race. And yeah. she's currently having it out with a lot of the fans over uh, her opinions about, uh, who's the little duck walk queen? Oh, Anitra. Anitra. And I can't remember quite what her opinions are about Anitra, but she's because like, I what she, I mean. Anitra, Anitra did the walk the fucking duck thing in the first challenge. And then like Aja like just critiqued it a little bit, kind of very uh legendary Laomi. And people were like, you're hating on her. You just wish you she had the career you wish you had, blah, 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 blah. It was that kind of stuff. But I think that on Green Day or Green Gay, whatever their name is, the uh that who that page that does the the video essays on drag race stuff. I don't I don't um, know that I've even heard of this person. Green Gay? I think it's either Green Day or Green Gay. Huh. But uh they do video essays about drag race girls. Um you you've probably seen one without realizing you've seen one. Um and it, it and it's more than likely in your recommended YouTube videos if you're, you know, anyway. Uh but the point is uh he he released a video about Aja and then Aja started getting like more hate again. Aja's one of those people who just kind of gets a lot of in my opinion unwarranted hate from the drag race fandom. Yeah, I think so. I think that a lot of it started though because I have to, especially after All Stars uh, three, people were like really riding the Aja train, and then she wanted to focus on her music a lot. So she kind of like she started performing and just she, she like chopped drag, and also she had her own gender identity and a lot of things going on with her own stuff. But I think people were like, there were like a few controversies where like gigs booked her, and we don't know what the email said, right, or what the agreement was. But she showed up to the gig, and they were expecting Aja. But they got her out of drag performing her music. And people were like, wait, we wanted to see you jump off a box into a dip in, a, in your outfit. Like, so I think a lot of a lot of it started then. Well, I think that something about the drag race fandom, they really have a problem when you distance yourself from drag. If you say you don't want to do drag, they will fight you. They will turn on you. <laughs> they will go bananas on you. I don't know if there's any other job in the world that you that if you quit, people are just gonna start fighting you. Besides <laughs> entertainment. It's like, girl, let this girl do drag if she wanna do drag, let her not do drag if she wanna do drag, leave this girl alone. But I've just also been on Legendary as well. I, I was I oh, was yes. on Legendary. Oh yeah. Uh, but I was in I wasn't on I was I was I was I, I was not competing on Legendary. I was just there for one episode. But I, I it was very amazing to see her there and to like kind of have a, a shared moment. I've just been I've been a big fan of Aja for a long time. Her music is truly amazing her look at me now lip sync is so iconic Aja has truly amazing music I cannot recommend you go listen to Aja's music enough I'm telling you do yourself a favor and listen to Aja's music it is truly truly look amazing. at me now I'm getting paid for um, let's go on to Pheromone honey I don't really know much about Pheromone did you do like a tour with her yeah Pheromone and I we were both in All Stars 4 together <clears throat> Um, Pheromone went home second. Did she, she have your, she have your favorite uh, little song? Oh my God. Look at her birthday. Martin Luther King birthday. No, look at her birthday. Hold on. Her promo picture was so good. Her promo look was so good. Uh, oh wow. She's born on September 11th. So someone else is born on September 11th. Ginger Minge. Ginger Minge. Um, her season nine promo look was. And Taraji P. Henson. Wow. Um, her promo look from season nine is one of, it was so beautiful and chic and sexy. That latex dress. I fucking love that promo look. Yeah. She always looks stunning. She recently came out, uh, as a trans woman. Um, yeah. On, like, um, really give it to me straight. On, <clears throat> do what? On give it to me straight with Maddie Morphosis. Maddie is honestly eating and I can't even hold her. Maddie's eating down. She is. Like, Paramount's only 30? Only because I feel like she's been around for so long. Not because I think she's old, but like I feel like I've been around, she's been around for so long. Like, and also the fact that that, that MySpace era aesthetic and like the Christina Aguilera is such a big part of her brand. I just assume she was like my age. Yeah, no, she's uh she's 30 years old. She's from Houston, Texas. Oh my god. Her and Beyonce from the same place. Really? She would have worked. Um, mm -hmm. well, I think she, I don't I don't know where she's she living Lord, now. Paramount. Is she in Vegas now? I have no clue. But um, I don't she, know. She, she vanished for a hot second. 
She did. She did. Pheromone, we did um, a Christmas tour together. It was a, a tour right after All Stars 4 or during All Stars 4. And I just remember Pheromone would, um, I think she she would just get <laughs> wasty McShwasty on this bus. And Pheromone would just stay in her stay in her gig after, after after the show in full geesh and just go out and party with the girls and then come back. And she would always just be crying in the front of the bus. We're like, Farrah what's going on? She's like, oh. literally crying. Yeah. Or like moaning or crying. Like, well, or like. No, crying. Tears coming out her face. About what? Because she was hungover? Yeah, hungover. Like, different things going on, girl. Didn't you say that Farrah used to, uh, this was, the one thing that actually came to my head about this, that you said, Farrah, I used to be like, this is wild. You said it in Brooklyn does it too. They would just get IVs delivered to the venue, and they would I don't know have Bro- IVs. I don't know. If Brooklyn does that? Does she? I think Brooklyn said she does. I think Brooklyn somewhere. I mean, you didn't say Brooklyn, but I think Brooklyn went online and said that she. Maybe maybe I made that about Brooklyn. I feel like Brooklyn either did it or said she did it. Or Pheromone absolutely does. A, a few times she's like hungover, so she just called an IV, and they came and gave her an IV backstage. That's wild. To like rehydrate her. Yes, that's wild. Yeah, fierce. I Honestly, fierce. Did I have an IV when I went under? You have to. That's have a thing, though. Like a lot of people do that now. They do. They do high. Like that's a, like a thing. Like there's, there's, it's, it's not even like rare anymore. I see it all the time on people's social media. Like IVs come and hydrate you. Yeah, to like certain people. I think I think regular folks ain't getting no IVs. I would. I'm not getting no IVs. No, sure. my friend and my 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 friend Aritza, um, her brother has does that service and like. A lot of people like who like party in the city, like they just get IVs and it's like a it's like a service. Like you just call like 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 an Uber Eats and they come to your apartment and they give you an IV. Isn't Arisa like a big time producer or something? Is she regular? So you think Arisa is a regular, re- regular old person? <laughs> I said her Arisa brother. Funny. Her brother. Her brother. Oh, he's right. Re- he's regular. <laughs> yes, I'm he's not in the industry. I'm sorry, Arisa's brother. I think you're spectacular. So, I don't think um, from a quick Google, Caleb. It, it looks like an IV is around 150 to 250 but if you want something bougie and fancy in it, it can go to 800 But like, it looks like standard water is between 150 and 250 what Water? Is putting, whatever Isn't whatever the standard, water? maybe not water, whatever it's the standard water. IV thing it's is. It's not water. Jacob, Jacob, Jacob is giving alternative, it is not water in there. It's just water. No, it's like a sugar water thing. No, it has like, What's it's in an not, IV. It's like sugar. Compound V. <laughs> IV therapy uses a type of plastic bag uh, that goes into the van and needle in a plastic bag. Yeah, water, all together. water, glucose, yes, water electrolytes. Yeah, so it is water. water. Why are you trying it to clap me? Electrolytes. It has electrolytes. No, but That's... me and Jacob said sugar water. You act like we were wrong. I said <laughs> electrolytes is not no, sugar. No, this is just like, just, like, just like the Koch brothers. Me and Jacob said sugar water. You act like we were wrong. It is sugar water. I was doing a bit. Y'all literally believe it. No, they shut the fuck <laughs> up. Your bits aren't good. Work on the bit. <laughs> How about that? I don't have any interesting stories about Fairmont because I don't really know her that well. But uh, she's she seems lovely and she is. Uh, they did that weird. Uh, they did that weird um, bit with Christina Aguilera. What? Oh, on, on season, season ten. The next thing they were like, "Welcome back." Pheromone. And then Christina yeah, was, came out. That yeah, was such was an interesting it. bit. Yeah. I mean, but they also we're... had Pheromone come in the same outfit and meet Christina Aguilera backstage. Yeah, Bob. <laughs> well, that doesn't change it. The bit is weird. <laughs> no, really um, uh, do we have time for one more? We do. Yes, we have time for one more. One of my How favorite. A queen, honey. A, I a love it, a queen. Bob her so much valentina 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 she was a she subbed for bob here on sibling rivalry podcast y'all should go back and listen to that episode and um and she talks all about uh um her hosting drag race mexico and etc i just love valentina valentina is definition textbook a class act just so graceful so classy just i just i'm just i'm just in awe of valentina her, her poise her grace and doing All Stars 4 with her, we talked a lot about that stuff, like the French vanilla fantasy and all that stuff, was chef's kiss to, like, see her IRL. And I'll just never forget how nice Valentina was to me when I joined Work the Road for the first time. I stepped in, and she was, she held my hand through a lot of it, and she was, like, helping me do choreo and stuff. 
So I fucking love Valentina. She's great. So people don't know this. Valentina loves disco music. She loves, loves disco music. And would listen to it very loudly in the dressing room. But I was really into the disco music too. So I didn't care because I was like, girl, I love disco music. Uh, Violet was into like EDM. Like fucking like so like it's like either either Violet Chosky gets it or Valentina gets the gets the uh the you know the aux cord basically the, the Bluetooth connection. So I was always advocating for Valentina to get it because I wanted to hear disco and I did not want to hear um I want to be I didn't want to be at the Electric Daisy Carnival Festival backstage. <laughs> And I toured with her for Work the World. She's very, I can I can agree. She's very, very lovely, very, very agreeable. Um, yeah, just really, really sweet and charming. She's really a sweet, charming young lady. Like I I I love Valentina. Yeah, she's, I love, love, love her. And she's uh from Cali, from LA, right? Yeah, I think so. And she's the host of Drag Race Mexico. Drag Race Mexico. Which is super gaggy and we were all i feel like we were all like rooting for her to get this Valentina job and she is got not five eight you think she's taller or shorter she's taller than that she's not taller than you Va- Va- no she's not taller than me valentina's probably like five nine because i'm five eleven valentina's like five not nine. an inch you re- you really act like the inch was just wild you, you oh, act like ten you act like she's six two or maybe five ten i feel like we're like the same height do you feel like you look eye to eye with her yeah, I think so. Um, I, I just remember that her getting cast for me, her as the host of Mexico and Brooklyn as the host of Canada is like is like it's right. Yeah, I like, agree with that. Right. So, okay, what do, so, so, what, so what are you saying about about France? I think that it should have been me. Je suis la jeune fille. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi? Interesting. Do you know what even any of that means? I don't. Do you know what literally any of that means? Because you're not a francophone. Okay. This nigga does one little show with Madonna at a little bar in France, and now he's fucking a muzzy. Yeah, me, yeah, me and Madonna performed at Joe's Pub. Now you muzzy now, all of a sudden. Um, I think that, uh, okay, here's, I have a theory about, about uh, RuPaul stepping down. When she start, when she gives up Australia, London, UK is next, and then America. I don't think she'll step down from all three at once. I think the first thing she'll do is give up Australia. I think you're wrong. I think RuPaul. I think RuPaul be like, I'm done, and he's just gonna leave all three. I don't think RuPaul is gonna like inch his way out the door. I don't think so. I disagree. You really think so? Yes, I think RuPaul gonna like, and I'm done. <laughs> what about just lightening your load? Like, what if you're like, I don't want to quit. I just want to lighten my load. I want to do. I don't want to host three seasons a year. RuPaul does more. RuPaul has been on more season drag race than anyone. <laughs> Truly, she has done uh, every season. No. Of, um, yeah, yeah. Who's been on more season drag race than RuPaul? I was gonna say Michelle, but no, she was on the first two seasons. Um, uh, Juju B. <laughs> yeah, Ru- 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 RuPaul has. I mean, are we counting Queen of the Universe? Yeah, but but still, RuPaul's been on, RuPaul's been on every season of US. None of our franchises. She's just been on like all, and she does all of the UK and all of Australia. She has filmed at this point probably thirty seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race, if not more. But Michelle has done all of the Michelle's done all the ones RuPaul has done, and then she's nope. also done. Two, nope. Yes, Michelle came well, in with that, but it's that one and two. But she's done Queen of the Universe, which those are twelve episodes each. So she and season one. Of America only had like what eight eight episodes, so Michelle may have done the same amount. You don't know how many episodes were on the uh, Queen of the Universe. You just made that up. No, it, it bitch. I watched the first season. It was twelve episodes. It was twelve. It was like nine, I think. Who won? Who won the first season? Um, Greg Queen, who now hosts Drag Race Brazil. Wait, she hosts Drag Race Brazil. Mm-hmm. There were fourteen episodes. Fourteen. So Michelle has done this, maybe a little more. Plus, she guest judge on Canada's Drag Race. Is Michelle going to step up for Rue? I don't know. Are you? I can see it. I think there's a segment of the population that would really be upset that it's not a drag queen, but I don't know. It has to be a drag queen. It has to be a drag queen. Michelle is a drag queen. 
But it has to be a, a campy drag queen. I could see Michelle doing it though. She's 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 talented and she's got the uh she's a she's a she's a true nightlifer. She has the ballroom experience, she has the drag experience, she has the cabaret experience, she has the RuPaul's drag race experience. I mean, she's quite qualified. Michelle is overqualified for the job, if anything. Yeah. Life is a cabaret, oh chum. You know, Join they do, um, the cabaret. They do put the for, uh, for uh, people who are who are uh, AFAB. What happened? Is there like a continental for AFAB people? A continental? Is there like a miscontinental for like people who are assigned female at birth? Yeah, know. you mean Miss Universe? <laughs> Miss America? <laughs> in the, the miscontinental world, there's like a, there's like a. I think there's potato, like a potato. Please. Are you gonna ask him? Yeah, ask Potato if he knows. <laughs> anyway, I, I can't remember, but I feel like there is. Michelle should do it. She'd win. I would see. I could see Michelle doing a doing a little ditty. Um, Monday we 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 didn't make it very far today. I got to be honest. But to be fair, we spent a lot of time talking about a, uh, a lot of stuff. Yeah, it was just the holidays. We had a little talk about like the holidays. It's fine. Y'all, you listen. Happy we got through holidays. half the girls, bitch. The fuck. But we, we we've been we've been averaging about a, a season per episode. But we're I think we've been averaging six to eight girls per episode. And that feels fair. No, Jacob. 68 girls an episode, Jacob? No. Yep. <laughs> That's what I said. Mane, can you admit you wrong about sugar water before, before you log off? I was doing a bit, and I'm not going to justify my bits. You do your bits all the time, and I don't laugh, and sometimes I laugh. And sometimes you laugh at my mind, sometimes you don't. And that's fine. I guess I, we've, we, I'm just continuing the documentation of Mone never saying she's wrong. It's always a bit. Anytime Monet's wrong, it's a bit. So, uh, so uh, uh, Bob Dragon Videos, timestamp. Because we're, we're gonna we're gonna gather our data on you, honey. Why are you so dead set on gathering data to prove me wrong? There, I mean, I could spend that it's same my energy. Passion. I still it's my passion. I could spend that energy on you, but I choose to do actual good things with my time and energy. Not oh, this is good. I'm reading the world of evil. This is my passion. <laughs> this no, is this is your the bastion, good. bitch. It's your bastion of humanity. And on that note, thank you for coming to my show. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.